What's up guys, Jason here, hope you're safe and well. Uh, back with another video uh, helping get started using Soundtrap. Uh, if you missed the last video, we covered the logging in and the signing up process for students. Uh, we also covered the basic layout and the basic functions of, of using loops. So feel free to go back and check that out. Uh, otherwise, let's get into it. Okay, so here we have our session from the last video. I'm going to follow on just using this. Uh, I thought it was a cool little loop. So I want to look at maybe using these three loops and arranging them a little bit differently. So say I want to you know, extend out the drums, for example. I'm going to grab that little loop icon in the top right corner there and stretch it out. And I think I'd like the same to happen with this synth. I'll keep that going to there as well, but I'd like there to be a bit of a gap in these in this little section here um, for the piano. So what we can do is instead of having to go in to our loops and searching for that specific piano clone and finding it and dragging it back in and moving that around, I'm going to copy and paste what we have here. So if I right click on that, this menu pops up. I can go down, copy that, and then I can move this playhead, remembering that we need to move that where we want it to be uh, to play back. Same thing, or record, same thing happens when you want to copy and paste. So you have to have that positioned where you're going to right click, paste. There it is. And we've got an eight bar gap sitting right here. Now, how do I know it's eight bars? So along the top here, we can see these numbers and what these numbers are referring to is the bars. So uh, just to point something out, if I go to my settings cog over here, I'm going to actually get rid of my face so that we can see this a little bit more clearly. If I go to my settings cog over here, we get this menu and you can see you can choose the size of the grid. If you have it on automatic, it'll just automatically choose for you depending on how far in and out you're zoomed but you can very specifically tell it which grid that you want to be working with you can change the time signature here or down the bottom where it says ruler you can change the the uh, the top information readout to be time rather than bars and where that's useful is uh say you were recording a, a podcast or say you were scoring a film you'd know at what point you'd be editing there. Now, speaking of locking things to the grid, I'm going to change that back because in this in this sort of setting, what we're doing here, it's, it's much more helpful to see the bars that we're working with and to use the grid. And we can see these gray lines representing those bars. This button here, that magnet refers to snap to grid. As you see, it's popped up there. So when that's on, and if I click and drag, any loop. See how it's locking to that grid? I can't move it into the middle of that grid if I wanted to. If I turn that off, I can then shift it around freely. But for our purposes today, it's much more useful to have that locked on. So I'm going to do that. Another thing I might point out, I might do the same thing here with the synth. I'm going to copy that synth and maybe have that come back in over here. Now, I'm going to zoom in. Another way we can edit using loops is with this bracket down the bottom. Now, you might notice if I hover my mouse over anywhere else, you're not seeing these brackets in any of these other uh, loops. That's because we've duplicated those loops out. Okay. So if I go back to the start, watch what happens with these brackets here which indicate the length of the loop that we're working with say i want to halve the length of this loop if i grab that back bracket and move it forward you've seen these little divots in the top 
multiply by two. And that's because we've halved this. So it's looping that first two bars instead of its original four. Okay, so those little divots there indicate how long the loop is, and you can change that. You might just want the first section of that loop. Now, I'm not sure if this loop is the best example to see that happening, because I think it does repeat anyway, but say we made it one bar long. And there you see we've changed the length of that loop. At this point, I think I'd like to record in an extra line that I'm going to play instead of using the loops. The loops are great, but at some point, it's always good to get into creating your own original loops. So the way to do that is you can add new track here, or you can go over here to add new track. Now we're gonna focus on a few things specifically today, mainly these center four and the brass and the woodwinds. We're not gonna go into drums and beats, and we're not gonna go into recording voices and microphones and things like that. Today, let's just have a look at, say, adding a synthesizer. So we click on that, and this is what pops up. You can have a MIDI keyboard connected to your computer, if you like. If you're on a device, say an iPad, you can actually play these notes just by pressing the screen. You can use it uh, with your mouse, uh, and you don't need to have an actual external keyboard connected. Soundtrack's actually been pretty clever with how they've laid out these keyboards. And that's just following the bottom line of the, let the letters on my computer laptop. And then these black notes are the next line up. So it's actually laid out fairly well. Like you would find a regular keyboard. So a few things to point out in here, I can change the octave, which means how high or low the keyboard is playing. Or I can go and tweak these different parameters up here. Now, I'll let you go and explore these areas, but there are different effects that are set up on here. Some of them as simple as just the volume of the keyboard that you're playing. Uh, reverb, which means, you know, that, that the echo in the space or the bounce back of the sound in the space. But some of these parameters and all, in, all the instruments are quite different, but some of these parameters really do alter the sound quite dramatically. I'm gonna leave that like that. Over here in this section, if I click on this, a menu pops up. Now, Soundtrap's got over 400 instruments available, um, and they're really quite fantastic, and they sound really strong. So this is, see, where I selected synth earlier, that's where that's reflected. And you can go in and find different types of synths as well. So th this is a lead, the, the, the default synth that com comes up is Flutterwave. And that's uh, demoed. And you can preview that just like with the loops by clicking on the, the, the play button next to it. All right, I'm gonna re record something. I'm, I wanna practice the line that I'm gonna play. So come up with a few notes that you wanna record in. And what we need to do is, there's two things here. It'll bring up this little ghost, as it just did, this little ghost window, and where you click down, all of a sudden, a new loop appears. That's referring to the piano roll. I'm gonna to get to that in a moment but I'm gonna delete that and record my own uh, performance there. So what we need to make sure that we've got is this little red R highlighted as such. So you can see these other ones aren't. That means that this track is record enabled. So we need to have that if we're gonna make a recording. Then we just go down to the record button down the bottom and start the recording, it'll count us in.
I might even put my metronome on to help me keep in time. Cool. Stop the recording. And there we have our recording. Now, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And using those same brackets as before, you can see I've only really recorded over those two bars right there. So I'm just going to trim the edges so that it's a nice, clean cut of those bars. So there's the end there. That's where I started. Fantastic. Okay, so I've got my recording here. Now, I don't really like that last note, but I've just recorded it. So what, what can I do about that? If I double click on that colored bar there, it opens up piano roll. Now what piano roll is, it's like a, a, a digital language. It's something that's known as MIDI, but we can see that it's a representation of the keyboard here. So the higher up these little gray bars are, the higher the, the note is going to be. And then we've got our grid going left to right, which is time. So I've got my one, two, three, four, four bar loop right there. This not last note is, is a bung note. I don't like it. I want to get rid of it. Uh, so I can either click on it and hit the delete button on my computer, or I can actually grab it and move it around and find a note that I do, do like it with. The other thing with piano roll is that you can actually draw in notes by double clicking on a, on a space that you, you want to put the note and move it to where you want it to be. I can also, just like with the loops, I can grab the end of those and adjust the length of it. Say I want it to be a different length, obviously move it around to where I want it to be playing, what time it's going to start. And there we have a new loop that I've just created myself. All right, guys, I hope that helps get you to the next step. Uh, using Soundtrap, uh, get in there, record some sounds, play around with the different instruments. There's some amazing things that you can use. Uh, I've been Jason. Stay safe, stay well. See you next time.